Welcome to this episode of Third Empire. Now with the quarter two results of most businesses announced, we take a deep dive into the top five sectors on the Nifty from a weightage standpoint to understand the factors which affected their quarter two results and also look at the headwinds which would affect them going forward. Now while we discuss the quarter two earnings of some of the relevant sectors in today's episode, we will also look at an announcement of the rollback in the export duty of steel which was announced during this week and we understand how this will impact the iron and the steel industry. Let's begin. You're watching Informed Investor, The Third Empire, an initiative by Research and Ranky. The Indian economy is slowly coming out of the skirmishes of the COVID-19 pandemic. The corporate sector's performance is healthy considering the financial results for the second quarter which were announced for the quarter ending September 2022. However, while the top line that is the sales revenue showed a growth, the bottom line which is the profitability remained under pressure. Just like the previous quarters, higher raw material costs continued to be a drag. The rise in commodity prices however led to a high input costs that had an impact on the profitability of the companies. Now, the banking and the financial services sector has been the star performer in terms of the earnings reported so far for the second quarter. Other sectors, especially consumer staples and consumer durables, are still showing weaknesses which indicates that the rural Indian economy has still not recovered from the impact of the pandemic. Now, amongst other key sectors, the iron and steel sector, construction materials and hospitality sector have seen a significant decline in their profits. Now, the Nifty 50 has a well-diversified portfolio across sectors with a 78% exposure to the top five sectors, namely the banking and financial services, IT, oil and gas, FMCG and auto. Today, we will deep dive into these five sectors and look at how the factors are affecting these sectors based their quarter two performance. First, we start with the banking and financial services sector. The BFSI sector has seen a boom in their earnings. Both state-owned and private lenders put up a strong show in the July to September quarter. The jump came in privately on the back of a steady rise in the net interest income and on the back of lower provisions. The second quarter results posted by the public sector banks were supported by strong credit growth and an expansion of the net interest margins. Now, experts say while a moderation in the net interest margin may occur going forward, a healthy profitability is likely to continue. The private sector banks, on the other hand, have made the most of the rising interest rates passing on the interest rate hikes eventually. The rise in profitability is aided by the combination of loan rate hikes and delayed deposit rate increases. Now, strong profitability reported by the top private banks is on the back of robust growth in the net interest income, which is the difference between the yield a bank earns on loans and the interest it pays on its deposits. Now, when interest rates are growing in the economy in a scenario like this, the net interest margins become greater as seen in the chart in your screen right now. The provisions, which is the loss from the loans, have also been lower as seen in the quarter two results. This is on the back of an improvement in the asset quality. Now, due to a healthy loan growth, margin expansion and the ongoing asset quality improvements, growth momentum has remained extremely strong in the second quarter of this fiscal year. Credit growth has been strong, but deposit growth have not kept up pace so far. The banks have enjoyed good margins in the second quarter. However, going forward, the deposit rates are going to move up because of the liquidity crunch, which will have an impact on the company's net interest margins. The deposit growth is expected to see some uptick in the current rising interest rate regime, but healthy credit growth and improving asset quality is leading to an increased profitability in the banks as well. Second, we look at the IT sector. India's IT sector clocked better than expected earnings in the September quarter as the demand momentum remained firm. Now, after facing headwinds on profitability for several quarters due to high attrition, IT companies got some respite on the front in the quarter ended September. Having said that, there are growing expectations of a recession in the developed economies and the bleak outlook for corporate profitability suggests that the spending on tech could possibly see a slowdown. Overall, the performance of IT companies have been good based on the quarterly performance numbers that have been seen so far. There were no negative surprises in the numbers and the management commentary was also upbeat. 
but a potential US and global recession does pose a threat to India's IT growth as a large chunk of Indian IT's revenues come from the US and other advanced economies. Going forward, the key matrix to track would be the hiring momentum and the attrition rate trends, the commentary on deal pipeline and any signs of slowdown, delay or cancellation of deals, the revenue growth of the top clients and the core verticals and the margin outlook amid slowing revenue growth and wage inflation. Third, we look at the oil and gas sector. The operating performance of oil and gas sector remained under pressure owing to global weakness in the refining margins and the inability of domestic oil marketing companies to pass on the higher global crude oil prices to the consumers. That said, the demand condition remained robust during the September quarter driven by reopening of the economy and the festive season travelling. Going ahead, the earnings are likely to remain under pressure for most upstream and downstream companies in the sector given shrinking global refinery margins as well as high under recoveries for oil company marketing companies. Fourth, we look at the FMCG sector. The fast moving consumer goods companies delivered healthy earnings reports in the latest quarter, but they are wary of an inflationary environment. The value growth for the FMCG industry improved marginally to high single digits driven by higher pricing. The volumes continued to decline in both the urban as well as the rural markets with a more pronounced drop in the latter. While there was some easing in commodity prices and supply chain pressures, inflation continued to be a challenge for the FMCG industry in the second quarter of this current fiscal. Along with consumption of high cost inventory, all FMCG companies recorded double digit revenue growth on the back of the price hikes that it had taken in the previous quarters to offset the raw material cost inflation. However, margins contracted year on year despite commodities like palm oil cooling off significantly from their March highs as the companies were sitting on high cost inventories. While the festive season saw an uptick in demand, the management remained cautiously optimistic going ahead for the FMCG companies. Last, we look at the auto sector. The auto sector is on a recovery path with broad based volumes and margin improvements. As we all know, when the pandemic lockdown hit the country, the Indian automobile industry went through a deep structural slowdown. Factories, showrooms and supply chains were shut down overnight due to the lockdown. Now, the auto industry was then struggling with issues like chip shortages, commodity cost inflation and muted demand. However, over the last couple of quarters, auto sector has held up pretty well. In the quarter two, the autos and the auto ancillary sector posted good numbers which is quite commendable. The auto volumes in the second quarter of this fiscal recovered across segments supported by improvements in the supply of semiconductor chips and early festive season mm -hmm. demand. The demand momentum sustained in the passenger vehicle and the commercial vehicle segments while two-wheelers and tractors saw good recovery during the festive season. Profitability also improved led by price hikes, moderating commodity inflation and operating leverages. Now, the underlying demand trends for the industry continue to remain stable. That said, the easing semiconductor chip crisis and other supply side constraints clubbed with a fall in the crude oil and metal prices have resulted in lower input costs which is also supporting the auto industry. While we believe that the auto sector outlook is positive, easing supply side constraints a pickup in demand and a fall in crude oil and metal prices resulting in lower input costs have all worked in the auto manufacturer's favour. While we say this, we must look at some contingencies that could impact the performance of the auto sector going forward as well. So the commodity prices which have come down from an all-time highs still remain elevated and the current macroeconomic condition make the medium-term outlook on commodities uncertain. The impact of the semiconductor and the supply chain constraints raising competition especially in the passenger vehicles categories are some of the, these factors that we need to keep an eye on. Now the growth momentum has been robust over the second quarter of this fiscal year thanks to a healthy loan growth, margin expansions and continued asset quality improvements in the financial services industry. The pricing of commodities such as metal and energy have hurt the other companies' earnings. Non-financial industries have seen their profits squeezed by increased interest rates and commodity prices. The financial services industry, however, has enjoyed a boom in the earnings. In general, the increase in financial services sector profits has offset the effects of increased interest rates and commodity costs on the Nifty 50's overall profitability. 
overall the corporate earnings for the quarter 2 were higher than anticipated despite a number of hindrances with the financial services and the banking sectors dominating the period. Now that we've looked at the quarter 2 performance of some of the sectors and also understood the headwinds that could affect them, let's look at another update which came in this week specifically for the steel industry. Now steel is the world's most important engineering and construction material. It is used in every aspect of our lives, in cars, construction products, refrigerators, washing machines, cargo ships, surgical instruments, etc. It is also widely used in a number of sectors such as construction, infrastructure, mechanical equipment, automotive and increasingly in the aerospace and other transformation sectors. Now the iron and steel industry is one of the most important industries in India and is also one of the vital aspects of stable growth and economic development. Now the consumption of steel is highly dependent on how the country's GDP is performing and more specifically on how the investments are turning out in the infrastructure sector such as railways, ports, roads, airports and even the housing sector. Now steel has an employment multiplier of 6.8 times. Employment multiplier is an indicator which indicates how important an industry is in the regional job creation. As we know, industries are linked to one another. Now a multiplier of 3 for example would mean that for every job created by the primary industry, two other jobs would be created in other related industries which make up for three jobs. So in the steel industry's context, for every job created in the steel industry, 5.8 other jobs would be created in other related industries. That's how relevant the iron and steel industry is to the economy. Now the output multiplier effect on the other hand goes to 1.4 times. The output multiplier is the proportional amount of increase or decrease in the final income that results from an injection or a withdrawal of spendings. So the iron and steel industry not only helps in job creation but also to contribute to the economy with helping increase the collective profits. Now over the years, India has become the world's second largest crude steel producer by producing more than 100 metric tons of it yearly. Steel in the present day scenario contributes to 2% of the total India's GDP and employs more than 6 lakh people directly to the production of steel and 20 lakh people indirectly. Major economies had pledged money in the underinvested infrastructure sector in the last two years to beat the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic-induced slowdowns, fueling a rally in the steel price. Now, as a result, steel prices across the world rode the tailwind and posted unprecedented profits. In India, however, the two-year sprint for the steel sector was stripped in its tracks on 21st of May 2022 when the government announced a 15% export duty on steel. The announcement was amongst a slew of measures taken to tame steel and its raw material prices as part of the larger move to combat soaring inflation. Now the control over rising inflation was priority for the government back then. Now steel prices specifically were at record highs and hence to bring down the steel prices and the inflation, the export duty was imposed in the month of May. Now the much awaited decision to roll back the export duties levied on the steel sector has been finally made and notified by the union government on November 18th. This relief comes on the back of the domestic steel prices correcting by almost 15 to 20 percent since the duties were imposed. The decision came after India's finished steel exports plunged 50% year-on-year in the first half of this fiscal to 3.6 million tonnes and the first time since the fiscal 2019 that the country became a net steel importer between July and August. Now the export duty remained in force for over six months and the abolition has come at a time when the slowdown in the global economy has significantly affected the demand for steel globally. Also, the global prices have witnessed a meltdown as the world's biggest consumer, China, struggles with its battle against COVID-19. Now, prior to the change in duty structure, India exported a record of 13.5 million tons of steel in FY 2022, led by international factors like environmental concerns surrounding China's steel industry, uptrend in the global steel prices, 
and higher demand from European nations. Now, India's import of steel has, however, seen a degrowth of 30.9% to 4 million tons in FY2022 from 6.8 million tons in FY20. This was backed by higher capacity utilizations as well as on streaming of large capacities that were acquired by incumbents during bankruptcy proceedings. Now, the steel industry's production and consumption grew by 6.4% and 11.4% respectively on a year-on-year -year basis during the first seven months of this fiscal which is from April to October 2022. So to answer the question of whether the rollback of the export duty on steel will aid the domestic steel industry, well yes it will. The cost competitiveness of India as against the other Asian countries will significantly improve post the rollback of the export duty. In the current scenario, removal of export duty may not enable an increase in the export volumes immediately, but it provides an additional opportunity to tap the export markets over the long term. Now, going forward, the government's thrust towards infrastructure projects, pickup in construction and the real estate activity, as well as healthy demand from automobile sector, all bode well for the demand of steel products. Geopolitical tensions, the fall in iron ore prices and the weak external demand will continue to moderate international steel prices and the realization for steel players. Domestic prices are expected to remain moderate in the near term, while strong domestic demand would provide some respite amid subdued exports. A revival in economic activities will also support domestic steel consumption and will aid steel production in India. With that, we conclude today's episode and hope to see you again soon. Until then, this is Raj Mehta signing off, wishing you and your loved ones the very best. Thank you. Did you like watching this video? Then download our app, Informed Investor, to watch more such informative and interesting videos.